Well, so many of you continue to reach out to WBZ's Dr. Malika Marshall with your coronavirus questions. Dr. Malika joins us live right now. Good to see you, doctor. Thank you so much. The very first question tonight comes from Deborah, who asks, what is the incubation period for COVID? So the symptoms can develop anywhere between 2 to 14 days after you've been exposed to someone with the coronavirus. With Omicron, the symptoms often begin around day 3, which is a lot sooner than some of the prior variants. And if you're wondering when you're contagious, you're the most contagious 1 to 2 days before you even develop symptoms and during those first 3 days of illness. Wow, so you're most contagious before you even have the symptoms, is that right? Wow. Yeah, unfortunately. Holy cow. All right, Deborah also wants to know how accurate are those at-home COVID tests? Of course, everyone's trying to get them. How accurate are they? <laughs> So they're not as accurate as the PCR tests, which are done in a lab, but they can be very useful in certain situations. So for example, if you test positive on a home rapid antigen test, chances are you are infected with the coronavirus and you should behave accordingly. If you test negative, it means either that you're not infected or that it's too early in the course of the illness for the test to actually pick up the virus. So if you develop symptoms or you've been exposed and you test negative on a home rapid test, then you should test again in a few days and continue to wear a mask around other people. All right, good info there. Carol and Bob in Quincy ask, we have heard there are certain things that should not be done before taking a COVID test, like don't eat or drink, do not brush your teeth or use mouthwash. Are there any others, and I think I should add too, are those even true? <laughs> so you're right, David, um, because the tests that you do at home really should be involving nasal swabs, not throat swabs. So you don't really need to avoid eating or drinking or brushing your teeth before putting a swab in your nose. Those precautions are really for saliva samples, which you really generally should not be performing at home. And the FDA actually just recently issued a warning to people asking them not to try to swab their throats with the nasal swab that comes with those kits. Make sure you follow the directions carefully. Yeah, that seems like it would be more unpleasant than doing the nasal swab. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Malika. Right. It's really, really hard to do. Really appreciate it as always. Dr. Malika offers her best advice, but always consult your personal doctor before making any decisions about your health. If you have a question for Dr. Malika, three ways to reach her. Her email, drmalika at cbs.com. On Twitter, the handle is at Malika Marshall, or you can Facebook message her, Dr. Malika Marshall. Lisa. All right.